Hello everybody, this is Dr. Connors, and this uh, Zoom session, this recording, it's going to be about a serious spiritual matter when we come to wanting to be healed um, that I think we need to address and just keep our focus, to make sure that we keep our focus um, um, on the right things. We all want healing when we're sick. We have cancer, we have serious disease, we have Lyme, we have ALS, um, Parkinson's, and all sorts of problems in this world. And we can ask serious questions, and I think you're called to do that. When we go through the grieving process of understanding that we are mortal, and uh, our life is not to be lived completely on this earth, it gets a little scary. When we're in our 20s, we think we're going to live forever. And as we get older and we start having serious diagnoses, then that reality hits in. And many times we turn to God, and that's a blessing. We're supposed to turn to God in times of crisis. But we have to be careful that we don't turn to God just to get what we want. Yes, we're supposed to ask for what we want, and the Bible is very clear that you you don't receive because you don't ask. Uh, but it's also very clear that we're supposed to ask with the right heart, and we're supposed to accept God's answer. Paul made it very clear that he asked for his thorn of his side to be taken away three times, he said. Which I find it kind of funny because I probably asked for my thorns to be taken away 575 times at least. And uh, I don't fully understand that passage, why he would only ask three times. But maybe it was three different periods of his life where he was in intense prayer about whatever that thorn be, an illness, a deformity, whatever it is we don't know. And he was intensely in prayer and got the answer from God that it wasn't going to be taken away. And he let it go for a period of time and then took it up another period of time. And there's a time and a season for everything, and we're called to do that. And we need to be fervent in our prayer and fervent in our asking. And I think we need to ask for healing. I'm praying for healing for all of you and for myself on a daily basis. But we have to keep it in balance. First of all, biblically, is healing promised? We can pull up verses all through the Bible where healing was promised to a certain person, to a certain people group, and to us as believers as whole. So healing is for us in the New Covenant. God did come to heal all our wounds and all our diseases. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be healed this side of heaven. If that was true, every believer from the New Testament on would still be alive. And that's not true. All the apostles suffered and died for his sake. Many were, were um, brutally uh, martyred. And to think that we have the right to not go down that same pathway is pompous, arrogant, and just absolutely foolish. If we want to serve our Savior, we need to be willing to die in the flesh just as our Savior did. Paul said, oh, that I may encompass the same sufferings that my Lord Jesus did, that he could know him more fully. And that's got to be our pro that's got to be our desire of our heart as well. Not that we run around by like uh, masochists wanting to be tortured for God, but if we're not willing to suffer for His namesake, we have to really question where we are with our relationship with Him. Though we're supposed to ask for a healing, and we're supposed to be praying for healing and praying for all the things that we need in our life, they cannot be more important than our relationship with him. And as I write in my book, Cancer Can't Kill You, if you're already dead, our first and foremost prayer has got to be asking God to put his desires in our heart. What do you want me to pray for, Lord? Maybe God's 
got me with this sickness so that I'll get on my knees and get closer to him and ask him what he wants me to pray for instead of just praying selfish prayers. I'm only speaking for myself. This is just my walk, and I can encourage you through my walk. I'm not telling you what to do, but I know that's how God deals with me. He gives me sufferings to break me. He gives me sufferings to deal with strongholds in my life so that I can turn it over to Him more readily because I fall every day. I think I can do it myself every day. And through my sufferings is how I learn obedience. And through my struggles, I learn obedience. And that is, that's my prayer every day. Lord, what do you need me to pray for? What do you need me to do? How do you need me to pray? Who do you need me to ask for help for? Because this isn't about me. Life is not about me. Life is not about me being healthy and rollerblading when I'm 85 years old and living this wonderful life. What good is that? What, what's, what's the importance of that? That is not supposed to be our God in our life. And that's what we have to be careful about. We need to be asking, what is the will of God for me? God, what do you want for me to do? Uh, if I've surrendered myself to be his, it's not about me anymore. It's, that's done. It's not about me anymore. I've, I've surrendered myself to him. And if I have truly surrendered myself to him, and it's a daily basis, it's a daily walk, I understand that. It doesn't just happen one second in time. That's what sanctification is all about. Is, is him chiseling away the rough edges of me to mold me and shape me daily more to be like the image of his son. And it's a painful process. And I need to be willing to go through that pain. It's easy to say that. But when I'm in the middle of that pain, I need to be reminded of that. So that is what the will of God is for me, not for me to live to be 95 years old and have this wonderful life and have a 401k and be able to golf every day. It's wonderful if you could do that. Don't get me wrong. But you need to be asking, is that the will of God for me? How can I serve you? How can I get to the end to hear those faithful words, well done, good and faithful servant? That's, that's my goal. And I hope that's your goal too. And that's where we have to be careful. And I have to say some sharp words because healing or anything else can be idolatry. If my whole focus in life is to get something from God, that's idolatry. And I know those are tough words and I know that might slap somebody in the face, but let it. Our purpose has to be free from idolatry. Our purpose has to be, Lord, I'm your tool. Use me. However you want to use me, whether you want to make me go through horrible things and suffer because somebody's watching me and somebody's going to be set free because of that, Lord, let it be your will. I remember, I think I've told you this story before, we were missionaries down in Mexico for a short period of time and we had went self-financed. Um, uh, so we sold everything that we had. This is back when we were in our early 30s. And um, fight, we were planning on staying three years, but seeing the need down there, we taught at a Bible school in an orphanage in Monterrey, Mexico. And uh, we ended up building a dormitory there, and I taught at the Bible school for a year on the covenant of God. And we also worked in the shanty towns down in Mexico, in the borders and in the shanty towns in Monterrey. And we used to go back with our suburban. We had four kids at the time. We used to drive back and we registered as missionaries with uh, some wonderful organizations on the other side of the border. Monterrey is about three and a half hours in from the border of Texas, South Texas. And we used to pick up about every weekend or every other weekend, we used to pick up and load our Suburban full of stuff that we were given by Feed the Children International. And uh, 
things that they were given by different corporations and stuff that we could give away and that we could be a blessing to the people in the shanty towns. And we used to pull into the shanty towns with our truck and I used to say with my broken Spanish, everybody line up and we would share a message of Jesus Christ and we would give people things and we would go around to their little places and talk to them about the Lord as best we could. And they were all so gracious because they were all wannabe Americans and so everybody was so kind to us. And we never felt even in the worst situations that we were threatened or we were in danger in any way, though we probably were. We just trusted the Lord was going to take care of us. But I remember coming back from there after we left, after a little over a year we were down there, we just completely ran out of funds and we could not raise money to stay down there anymore and we had really no choice but to come back. And my wife and um, two youngest, had, uh, my father-in-law, flew them back up from South Texas and I was driving back with my two older daughters. Um, they were in their early teens or a little bit younger at the time. And we had nothing. We had zero money, not one penny left. And I was pulling our Suburban, and I had just enough gas money to get home. And we had rented a U-Haul, a little teeny U-Haul trailer. We were pulling that because we had purchased some mattresses and a bunk bed down there, and we didn't want to um, give that up, so we brought that back with us. Um, so all our worldly possessions were in this suburban, in this little U-Haul trailer, pulling it back. And I just remember the girls were sleeping and I was just crying out to the Lord because we didn't have a job. We didn't have, I didn't have my chiropractic license. I couldn't practice anymore. I had given that up and, uh, was crying out to the Lord because I felt like the best we could describe all our work down there was that we were putting drops of water into a bucket that had no bottom. That's what it felt like. We just like, what, what did we do anything to make a difference? We toiled and worked day and night, and I just felt like we didn't do anything to make a difference. And it was one of those moments that I felt like I really heard from the Holy Spirit directly to my heart. And he said, if I would have had you do this all over again, for just one person, would you do it? And that was a ginormous slap in the face to me because it was a revelation that God would send his son to go to the cross for just me or just one person and suffer everything that he suffered to take on the sins of the world for my salvation alone, if it was only for me, why wouldn't I do that for him, for just one person? And it's just a revelation that it's not about me. It's not about my stuff. It's not about my purpose. And it's so easy, especially in America, to become so idolatrous to things and to thinking that we have the right to even health. Who says I have the right to health? What kind of warped sense of understanding is that? We have no right to health. It is by a miracle of God that I am breathing today. It is a miracle that my heart is beating. And instead of being thankful for that, I'm whining because, oh my gosh, I might have two months to live or eight months to live or two years to live. I've never been promised two seconds to live. Praise God that he's given me today. And yet we worry so much about tomorrow. Jesus said to Peter, let the day's own troubles be enough for today. And I need to learn that. The problem is, really, honestly, it's who we put our faith in that makes a difference. The problem is, most of the time, I have my faith in a what? In me getting better. That's what my faith is. My faith is in me curing cancer. My faith is in this rife machine working or my nutrition working. My faith is in is in my relationships being good. My faith is that my 401k is, is still healthy and that the economy is going to stay up. That's the wrong thing to have our faith in. It's a faith in a who. That's who we have to have our faith in. It's our faith in Jesus Christ that he is enough. There's a story in the Bible of a woman who was 
bleeding for a decade or so and sick and had spent her life savings going to doctors. And Jesus was walking through a crowd, being touched by everybody, reaching out, wanting something from him. Jesus, Jesus, heal me, heal me. The apostles, I can imagine, were pushing the crowds back. And, and a woman crawled underneath everybody and thought, if I could just touch his garment, because he has everything I need. He is everything I need. And she rubbed her hand along his garment as he walked by. And healing went out from him and healed her. And in this crazy thing, in the midst of this crowd, Jesus turns around to his apostles and says, Who touched me? And I'm sure the apostles are like, Are you are you freaking out of your mind, Lord? I mean, everybody's touching you. We're smashed in this crowd. Everybody's screaming. What do you mean, who touched you? What do you mean, who touched you? Somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. And he turns around, who touched me? Who touched me? And here, left on the ground, is this woman crouched, looking up. Shy. Uninvited. Wondering, am I going to get yelled at? She said, Lord, it was I. And he said, your faith has healed you. Does that mean your faith in being healed? Does that mean your faith in being cured? I don't believe so. I believe it was her faith in Jesus Christ. Her faith that he was everything. He was all she needed whether she was going to be healed or not. She was all, he was all she needed. And that's where we need to be. God is all I need, whether I get healed or I don't get healed. It's not about this world. This is not my home. I want to go home. I long for eternity. I long to spend eternity in heaven, just getting to know my Savior more and more forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's how vast the knowledge of God is. None of us can even understand or grasp the depth, the width, the breadth of the, of the knowledge of God that we're going to gain in eternity. That's what I long for. Yes, do I want to be healed? Sure. Do I want to spend some time with my grandkids and my children and my wife? Absolutely. But not more than I want to spend with my Savior. And if it is ever more than I want to spend with my Savior, they are an idol in my life. And Lord, may that never be. That needs to be our prayer. Lord, make you all I need, Heavenly Father. Just whatever you need to put me through so that you are all I need and you are my desire of my heart. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.